Jamming like Chico on a piano Picking up lava on a volcano Riding on a horse in Idaho Welcome to the Mr. Monkey Show Yo, welcome to the Mr. Monkey Show Go, welcome to the Mr. Monkey Show Yo, yo, welcome to the Mr. Monkey Show Yo, welcome to the Mr. Monkey Show It's okay, he's, he's friendly. Hello and welcome to the Mr. Monkey Show. Today we're in Los Angeles, California with artist, illustrator, Stacy Rosich. Hi, thanks Hi, for Stacey. having me. Hi. Thanks for being on my show. It's my pleasure. I, I, I noticed that you, you paint and, and also draw mm -hmm. these really complex scenes. Yeah. And I, don't, I just don't understand how you come up with that. I mean, do you, I mean, how do you know what you're gonna draw? Yeah, how do you make that? sometimes it's it's more difficult than others, but you know, often I think that I, I'm such a visual person and such um, a, a narrative person that I, I often see stories develop in my head. Oh, yeah, it's, some they just unfold in my, in my into my mind's eye. So oftentimes I will dream about pieces. I take a lot of different reference images, like you know, masks or books or images that I keep collecting. So. So you have a special place in your head where you kind of store all those ideas. I do. I have like a special little pocket in the back where I just like stuff old receipts and then weird Can I images. See that? Yeah, sure. It's like blah. Wow. Very moving work. Thank you. Makes me think about my own life. No, I know. I that's what I want. Everyone to just kind of have their own like, you know, thoughts on uh, mortality. I was thinking about all of these um reliquaries and all these shrines that I've been creating um, and I was thinking about all these characters that have to basically stand guard for them. They're basically the, the, uh, the security that, that has been assigned to stay with these shrines for years and the way I think of these characters is they've been sitting there for days if not weeks or, or maybe even years and they are so bored. So I've seen these Characters before. Yeah. I've seen that guy. And I've seen, I think I've seen that guy in uh -huh. another painting of yours. Yeah, there, there are certain characters that kind of are, are common uh, common visuals in my pieces. They're almost like a, kind of like a Where's Waldo almost. And, and I actually find them, they, they kind of emerge after different bodies of work. Wait, is that? Yep. Are those Doritos? <laughs> it's true. Is that, Doritos. A, is that a soda can? Uh, uh, adult sodas. You got a, there's a, there's a bunch of trash in there. <laughs> this is one of my favorite books. It's called Heavenly Bodies. Um, it's basically about saints in Central Europe that were basically kind of sequestered to uh, catacombs in like the Protestant Reformation in like the Middle Ages. So, I don't know. Uh, and then they were basically rediscovered, and then a lot of them were known to be saints, and so a lot of local craftsmen turned them into basically displays. So and I can see how this influences your art. Right, and it's like it is like the utmost respect for these for these people and their and their bones because they take they basically took them from the dust and darkness and, and gave them their their rightful kind of display that they thought that they deserved. Blah. Whoa, that was weird! I just saw all these crazy pictures! Yeah, so it's in there. It's in there and it, and it served me very well. You know, it's the kind of thing that I, I used a lot when I was a kid. You know, then once you start becoming a teenager, you get a little embarrassed by it because you're drawing really goofy things. And then somehow you keep sticking with it and then next thing you know, you're a professional artist as an adult. So that's how it happened! Yeah, basically just don't ever be embarrassed by something you're really passionate about. Oh. Just keep doing it. Have you ever drawn a monkey? I don't know if I have, but it might well, be time. This guy. This guy? Yeah. You ready? Let's, Let's do this! this. <laughs> Looks good. You look very majestic. I like it. I can't move. Yeah, don't even blink, which is probably going to be okay. Can I talk? Yeah, just try not to move your mouth too much. So, can you talk a little bit about your process? What, you, what are you doing? You, you first, um... I'm doing a 
sketch first because that kind of allows me to like draft the piece so I know exactly what I'm doing. And then I lay it out on the piece of watercolor paper and then I fill it in all with paint. So. I can't, I can't look at you, but I know what you're talking about. Okay, you can put your arm down now. Oh man. You're oh, very, no. you're very good at portrait sitting. Oh, man. Kind of. It's really sore. <laughs> Oh yeah, you want a little bit of boop boop. Oh yeah. Oh, I can. Oh, I can feel those muscles. Yeah. I've been working out. I can tell. Oh, it's like a slim gym. Yep. It's really nice. I kiss them. All right. I think I'm just about ready to start putting the color down. All right. Let's check out the coloring. Alright, let's see. The trick is to always let this dry because it dries very fast and once it dries you can paint up to the very edge and it won't blend together. But if you don't wait, it'll just seep together in kind of this big watery mess. So I have to make sure that this is all, I kind of do a little, little finger test. Looks good. So this is when I cut in and I start to create some of the shapes. So that's really interesting, right there, mm -hmm. right there with, with what you just did. Yeah. That, it looks like you're, you're layering. Mm -hmm. I did. And oftentimes when you do it with a similar color, that's just a little bit darker when it dries, it's just very subtle. See how I'm doing that there? Very cool. Mm -hmm. And it's always nice when you put the lighter colors in first and then you put the darker colors over it or next to it, then they really make them pop. Do you see how your little lower jaw here next to your fur looks really, really bright? Oh yeah, so you're saying that's because you're putting something darker next to it. Exactly. They're creating a really nice natural contrast. I always say use less water because I think that's the instinct when you use watercolor is just to really just get it sopping wet, which often it's like then the watercolor is completely uncontrollable. But if you start off with very little water, then it's much more easy to control. Ooh, that's a nice touch. Thank you. All right, now let's see. Now it's time for your tail. Nobody is really late. Color here. Yeah. I'm a mer monkey. You're a mer monkey. I'm a mer monkey. <laughs> I always wanted to be a fish. You're going to be such a good swimmer oh, now. Man. All right, and I think that about takes care of it, except now I just have to sign my name. This is really incredible. This is one of my favorite pieces of art ever. What? Really? Yeah. Thank Maybe you. This is me, but yeah, well, you know, really familiar subject matter, but I really think you should take it with you. You're, you're, you're kidding me. No, I want you to have it. You're going to let me keep this original piece? Yes, of by course. By you, Stacey Rosich? By me, it's true. I really think that this would be a nice addition to your new home gallery with all the art of you. That's amazing. Thank you so much. You're can welcome. I, I have nothing to give you. I can give you a hug. I'll take it. Oh, oh thanks for so coming. Oh, oh, it's getting kind of late. So, uh, yeah. thanks for joining me on the Mr. Hockey Show. Yeah. And uh, thanks to all of you for tuning in. On a volcano, riding on a horse in Idaho. Welcome to the Mr. Monkey Show. Yo, welcome to the Mr. Monkey Show. Yo, welcome to the Mr. Monkey Show. Yo, yo, welcome to the Mr. Monkey Show. Oh yeah. Welcome to the Mr. Monkey Show.